Gay Church. It's good to see your faces. I have a bit of a froggy voice this morning, so please, just please bear with me. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've ever if you've ever read the books or watched the the video series, um, the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, C.S. Lewis just paints a really beautiful picture of just in a kind of an allegorical picture of just even um, just the kingdom and Jesus. And there's one there's one part where these kids are kind of ushered back into Narnia, this, this kind of this crazy land, looking for Aslan, the, um, the, it's kind of the portrayal of Jesus in this series, the book series. And as they're there, they're trying to find him, um, and there's just kind of this half-hearted, you know, just search through Narnia, figuring out what's going on. And at one point, the, the youngest, the child, Lucy, she kind of looks across this gorge, 
and she actually spots him, and then all the other kids kind of run over and try to see, look for him too, and, and they didn't see him, and so they're, they're all frustrated, except for Lucy. She's like, I saw him, I saw him, and later that night, her older brother's talking to her, and she's like, he's like, Lucy, why, why are you the only one that saw him? How come none of us saw him too? Why didn't I see him? And I remember when I first first would have read this and and, uh, and even seen this also in film. I just remember just God just used it just to stab me. I just to really convict me here because Lucy responds with, "Well, maybe it's because you didn't expect to see him." Isn't there something about expectation? And I know even just Rosa was mentioning it this morning as we we're entering our time of prayer, and um, she might even share some of that a little, little later. But just that whole idea of because we come together. Do you expect to see him? And sometimes maybe even come in, come in in a morning like this too, frustrated, discouraged. And I might, and again, this is not condemnation. This isn't, I'm not trying to throw anything at you, but I, I want to encourage you. You know, are you coming in expecting to find him? He's a, he, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's made it clear. So I just, as we gather together this morning, as we just would pray together this morning, may our expectation be just raised up, Right? And that as we seek him out, he will be found. And, um, and even just the very fact that you're, you're joining us online or hanging out here this morning, that already says something about your expectation. So again, that's an awesome thing. But, you know, may we have this collective expectation, God, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, you are going to meet with us here. We are going to find you and you're going to meet us right where we're at. So let's just pray together here. Father in heaven. We thank you so much for the morning, and I pray that you would continue to capture our hearts. I pray that we would have the heart of a child, that we would have the faith of a child, that we would not be bogged down, weighed down by the cares of this world, the affairs of this life, but we would look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we look to you, Lord. We thank you for bringing us here. And Lord, we just want to lift up just those that we're standing with this week. God, we're so grateful for just Daniel Luzon as Meraldo. And I know they'll be traveling here even this next week too. And God, we're grateful for just the foundation that you've used, you've helped them establish there in Switzerland. But God, even the calling that you have on them now in this new season too, to look to be able to transition over here to the USA. So God, I pray that they would just continue to be able just to pour into the base that they're a part of. Would they just continue to have a heart for that community? Would you use them there in Lausanne, Switzerland in a mighty way? And God, I pray that you would just direct each and every step as they look to, to um, head over here you know, just, just in the near future. So God, we just pray for favor and every component of that. Would you strengthen their family? Would you bless their marriage? Would you give them health? And I pray that they're, would you give them or just the ability to... Um, just connect well during this next week here in the States. God, I just thank you for Pastor Kevin Griffin. God, we're grateful for just Grace Point Church of the Nazarene. God, I thank you for the way that they are just are really are, are embedded in this community. I think even just of the upward basketball program that they've done too, just for many years that I've just seen hundreds of kids go through. And God, just thank you for their heart just to, to pour out, to be open-handed. Would you just continue to use them in a mighty way? Would you bless their, their gathering, their time this morning? And would you, as they would seek you out as well, would you be found? Would you just, just um, impact each and every heart as they would gather in your name today? And just watch over them. God, we just thank you so much for my wife, Juliana. God, thank you for just the... Um, the the direction of the oversight she gives within her zone just with the small group zone component and i just pray that you would just strengthen her would you watch over her god i pray that she would uh, not be weary in her well-doing and lord just uh, allow her just to be an exhorter an encourager and just uh, a good shepherd just to those that she's walking with um in this small group and small group leaders so just would you just bless her today god strengthen her Thank you for her life. And God, we also want to lift up our youth. We know that many of them are actually at the youth retreat this weekend, the Westgate youth retreat. And so God, I pray that you continue to watch over them. Would you just deeply impact their lives this morning? God, we thank you for just the real spirit of cohesion that we see within that crew, for the hunger and thirst for righteousness that has just been, that it has captured so many of their hearts. And God, I just pray that they would come away marked. They would come away, Lord, just captured by you, your presence. And thank you so much for Ellis and his leadership to that sphere of ministry. And so just watch over them today and bring them back here safely as we pick them up later this afternoon. Again, God, meet us here. We, um, we look to you. God, where else can we even go? Because you alone, you alone have the words of eternal life. 
So we submit ourselves to your Lordship and we do praise you this morning. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
You're about to move. I feel it in the wind you're about to ride in. You said that you would pour your spirit out. You said that you would fall in sons and daughters.
ready for the Spirit to move this morning, for God to move. I have a word for people among us this morning who feel like you're in a crisis, uh, you're in a very difficult spot, and God wants you to know that that is the place where he does his miracles. He wants to remind you that every miracle first required a crisis. Each miraculous conception first required infertility. Each miraculous provision first required a need. And each healing first required an illness. And each miraculous deliverance first required a bondage. If you find yourself in any of those circumstances this morning, God wants you to know that you're on the brink of a miracle. And as you worship this morning, look for his presence. Look for him in the midst of your trial. And give that trial to him and let him work his miracle. Amen. I just want to encourage you this morning. If, um, if there is a miracle that you feel like you need in your life, and um, we believe everyone here is a minister. And so if you feel like there's a miracle that you're, you're praying for, you're believing for, if you just want to raise your hand. And this, I'm just going to encourage as we go into this next song, just for you, a couple people to gather around for them and go ahead and just pray. Just believe with them. Believe for that miracle that they're believing for. And so if anyone's here who's, who's seeking after a miracle, just go ahead and raise your hand and then allow some people to pray for you and with you. Oh, 
the God of miracles, the God of miracles, oh declare it, the God who was and is to come, the power of the risen one, the God who brings the dead to life. I have seen God come through and answer prayers for me and I am believing that you have seen that as well and if you have not that is who he is that is who he is and maybe the miracle that you're needing today is peace because maybe you've come through a battle and maybe the miracle is the peace that passes all understanding and he says, I am peace. I am who you need me to be for you in this season. So Father, we declare the miracles, God, that you have started will be completed in Jesus' name. The miracles that have yet to be seen, we call them forth in Jesus' name. We call for healing in Jesus' name. We call for healing to bodies. We call for healing in minds. The mind of Christ, we just release the mind morning. Father, we receive what you have for us. We declare this this morning. The God who was and is to come. The power of the risen one. Oh, it's who he is. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles.
your name this morning. You are the name above every other name. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Father God, we ask this morning that you would continue to be glorified in our lives. Every word that we say, everything that we do, every breath that we breathe, we desire to bear your image well in all the earth, Father God. We desire to see we desire to see our communities. We desire to see our, our, our nation. Lord, we desire to see all the people of the world to come to know you. And so, Lord, we ask that your name would go forth in all the earth. We ask that you would continue to empower us by your Holy Spirit to reach the people that you've placed right in front of us and to work together, Lord, to continue to, in unity, to continue to see um, the gospel message go forth. And so, Father God, we just invite your Holy Spirit's presence. We invite you to continue to shine your glory on us and change us and transform us, Father God. And Father God, I also just want to pray this morning for anyone who raised their hand, needing a miracle, believing for a miracle. Father God, we stand with them this morning. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would increase our faith, that you would increase our expectancy of you want to, what you want to do in each one who raised their hands, lives, Father God, or raised their hands. And we just ask that you would work in their life, Lord, and we just to come alongside them and believe for a miracle and that you would work powerfully in them. In Jesus' precious name. And Father God, as we continue on with this service, we just thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for who you are. We just worship you this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wow, he's awesome. Thank you, worship team, for serving us this morning. But man, we serve an amazing God, don't we? Just Yeah, just astounded and just amazed and just so appreciative that so often he comes and visits us here as we come to gather on a Sunday morning like this, as we come to worship. And don't want to ever take that for granted and just so appreciate that he would come and, 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 and delight us with his presence. And so, so thankful for that. Now, my name is Chris Tanger and I serve on the pastoral team and um, just thankful so much that you each are here. Um, we also want to just take this opportunity to acknowledge each of you who uh, might be visiting or guest here this morning. And so I'm going to invite the, the greeters team to come forward here. And how we do this is we don't want to embarrass you in any way. We don't want to have you stand up, call out where you're from in no way. We won't even ask you your favorite color. All we would just ask, uh, if you're wondering what mine is, it's blue. But all we would ask is that if you are a guest, a visitor here this morning, that you would just raise your hand and then our greeters will get a packet of information into your hands this morning. So if there's anyone here on these, this floor seating, if you could just raise your hand up nice and high and our greeters will get a packet to you. And then if there's anyone up in the mezzanine seating, we'd also love to, to get a packet to you. So 
Guests, as they, as they would get a packet to you, we thank you so much for being with us again. What you can do is you can take out that guest card. You can go ahead and fill that out. And at the bottom of that guest card, there's a space that says, how can we pray for you? And what we'd love is uh, if you could put something down that we could pray for you for. And uh, what uh, happens with these cards, they get distributed to us as a pastoral team, and then we'll be praying for you this week. And so guess what you can do is you can go ahead and just to take that card at the end of the service. There's offering boxes as you would exit and leave the auditorium. And so you could go ahead and just drop that card in there. Or if you would find anyone with a badge like me this morning, you could also pass it to me or us. So thank you so much for being with us this morning. A couple things to communicate about here this morning. Um, A couple weeks ago, several weeks ago now, we would have gone through the process of Baby Bottle Boomerang, and that's where we get those baby bottles from Align Life Ministries, formerly Susquehanna Susquehanna Valley Pregnancy Center, and then everyone would either put cash, checks, coins, whatever in there, and then we would return them to Align Life Ministries. And so recently we just heard back from them, and we just want to celebrate uh, all of your generosity in participating with that. Uh, We just heard back that we filled up 106 bottles, and we also would have raised seven thousand seven hundred and ten dollars and thirty two cents so yeah thank you so much everyone for participating in that and time and time again just as a a church family um, you guys continue to amaze us with your generosity and so we thank you for everyone who uh, helped out and participated in that They told me there's still a few bottles outstanding, so if you happen to still have one of those bottles, please don't give them back to me. Um, You can take them directly to Align Life Ministries there in Ephrata and uh, get that bottle to them. So thank you, Dove Westgate, for participating in that. Now a couple other things just to to note. Pastor Daryl, he is uh, away ministering this weekend at Livingstone Christian Fellowship. I think that's up um, Newmanstown, Schaeferstown area. Um, a part of his connection with the WSA network is also to oversee some churches, and so he's there connecting with them, serving them, and that's why I'm standing up here. So um, uh, Mim also was serving this weekend at a women's retreat, and so I just thought, let's take a minute. I don't know, Daryl might be given an opportunity to preach here in a minute. Why don't we just go ahead, bow our heads. Why don't we pray for Daryl Mim as they finish up those serving opportunities. So, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for Daryl Mim and the leadership that they walk in and just this opportunity to minister at a couple different places this weekend. And we just pray your uh, Holy Spirit would just rest on them. There'd just be peace, but also they would both talk and speak in power, and you would empower them by your Holy Spirit just to see many good things come about in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, One other thing to note, um, this doesn't affect a lot of you, but uh, we are a part of a network, Dove International, and um, coming up here is the International Leaders Conference, so that's somewhere some different leaders from all around the world end up gathering at Sandy Cove, Maryland, and uh, we praise the Lord and different things, and, and there's different things that happen there. But all that to say, um, I think next Sunday is Mission Sunday, and we'll also have some different individuals uh, that are going to be here, maybe from around the network. And so just want to in, invite you to be welcoming, encouraging to anyone who might be coming in from around the world, and so we just get that opportunity uh, to have some people here next week, and so we're very, very excited about that. With all that being said, let's go ahead and roll the video announcements. Hey, what's up, Westgate family? Thank you for joining us today and making us a part of your week. Let's get into some announcements. Ladies, our next WOW Connect night is this Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. Invite a friend and join us for our annual birthday bash as we take an evening to celebrate all of our birthdays in one go. Enjoy cupcakes, ice cream, and party games. Please bring a $10 wrap gift for our birthday exchange. We can't wait to celebrate with you. Our special mission service is coming up next Sunday, April 14th. We are excited to welcome Dove Pastor Dirk Devling from the Netherlands as our guest speaker. We'll also be receiving a special missions offering during the service where you can give in support of our missions fund. We hope to see you there. Dove's Night of Honor is just one week away. 
Join Dove family members from all over the world next Sunday, April 14th from 5 to 8 p.m. here at Westgate as we celebrate all God has done since the founding of Dove International and as we honor Larry and Laverne Kreider for their 44 years of faithful service and ministry. This is an evening you won't want to miss. For all the details, visit dwchurch.org events. Dove Westgate is hosting a special gathering for those in our congregation who have experienced the passing of a spouse. Widows and widowers are invited to attend our Journey of Hope luncheon on Sunday, April 21st, following the morning service in the Cove with special guest speaker, Del Burkholder. We hope you will join us for a time of fellowship, food, and encouragement. You've got just one week left to register, so visit the event page of our website to sign up no later than Sunday, April 14th. You can find more details about these events in your bulletin or by visiting our website at dwchurch.org. Also, if you need prayer, feel free to seek out a prayer team member following the service. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great week. All right, awesome. Now, at this point, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dismiss Kids Track and uh, also launch this morning. So, kids, you are dismissed. Everyone else, you are welcome to go ahead and raise your feet. We're going to have a two minute countdown. So, uh, go ahead and greet someone and then we'll transition into the message. could go ahead, return to your seats. We're going to go ahead and uh, get into the message here this morning. So thank you again so much for being with us this morning. And again, my name is Chris Tanger and I serve on the pastoral team. And the question we are going to be looking at this morning is up there on the screens, what's next? What's next after the resurrection? Now, before we do that, <clears throat> I always like to tell some jokes every now and again and tell some stories, so hopefully you'll find this story amusing. Uh, this is also in an effort to give parents a chance to get back in, too. But I heard this story on the internets this past week, and I thought I'd share it with you. And uh, so how it works out, forgive me if you're of Jewish background, I hope this won't offend you at all, but what ends up happening is this man ends up going to his rabbi. He's like, Rabbi, Rabbi, you're never going to believe what's happened to me. My son left the house, and then he became a Christian. And the rabbi's like, shh, shh we, don't, we don't want to talk about that, but you're never going to believe what happened to me, the rabbi said. My son left the house and became a Christian. And so they, the guy's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the rabbi said, well, we're going to pray to God. We're going to pray to God. So the man and the rabbi, they come together, and they pray to God. God shows up, and he comes to the man, and he comes to the rabbi and said, you guys are never going to believe what happened to me. 
Did you guys get it? <laughs> Jesus left the house, came back, he was a Christian. So, <clears throat> I know, I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself, but... Um, before we go any farther, why don't we pray for this message? So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to dive into your word, to grow together, and to learn. I pray just you would uh, lead me here this morning, Father God. Anything that is of me that's not of you, I pray, would uh, be gone in Jesus' name, but also would ask that everything I speak today, Holy Spirit, you would even just illuminate for people that's from you. And so would you speak through your word? Would you speak through me? In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So, we just came off of Easter Sunday, and we celebrated our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ's resurrection from the dead. And remember the story, the angel said, don't be afraid, I know you, who you're looking for, you're looking for Jesus, he's not here, he's risen from the dead, just as he said it would happen. And last week, Pastor Dare, I thought, gave an awesome message, uh, in my opinion, the encouragement and challenge to live in what? Anyone even remember? Fearless living. Fearless living. Jesus defeated sin and death, giving us the opportunity to be renewed through him. And through him, then we can then follow him. And so he drew out this scripture, Romans 8.15 said, So you have not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. And now we call him Abba, Father. And that Abba, Father is a very intimate turn, an opportunity to have an intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father. And he, he brought out some five different points of why we can live in fearless living. And he said, we, we know that Jesus tells us the truth. And he expounded on that more, but I think we can, as we look at Scripture, as we look through history, we can see that the, the old, he fulfilled all these Old Testament prophecies. And then he did predict his own death and resurrection, and he did it. And so I think we can go with that, whatever Jesus says, right? Point number two was death is not the end. We have this blessed hope uh, that death is not the end. Point number three was God loves us extravagantly. And uh, Romans 5 says this, he, he mentioned this scripture, God demonstrated his great love for us by sending Jesus to die for us while we were still sinners. And we'll talk more about that later. Point number four, God has a good plan for our lives. Romans 8.28 says this, We know that in all things God works for good for those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. Amen? And then point number five, God will take care of our needs. He cares about you. He cares about every hair on your head. And because of some of these things, we can uh, walk in fearless living. And that's exciting. So now back to the question I want to pose this morning. What's next? What's next after the resurrection? What should, we, what should the next opportunity, what's next with this opportunity to engage in fearless living? Well, let's go to Scripture to direct us. Now, some of you might have an idea where I'm heading with this, this sermon this morning. We're going to talk some about the Great Commission, and I want this to be an encouragement towards us in actively engaging in the Great Commission as a church. So let's start as in Matthew 28, Matthew 28, verses 5 through 7, it says this, Then the angel spoke to the women, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead, just as he said it would happen. Come, see where is his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell the disciples that he was risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember of what I told you. And then we see in some of the other verses, guards conspired with the priests and elders to concoct a bit of a story about what, act, what happened, but it was a false story. And then we get here to verses 16 through 20, which say this, which are familiar verses. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Like I just referenced, this, this section of Scripture has become known as the Great Commission, and 
What is the Great, great Commission? Well, essentially, Jesus uh, was giving uh, instructions to his, his, the apostles, the disciples, of what life was going to look like and what they should engage with in, in his physical absence, right? He was giving them this direction for what they should be doing now that he is moving on as we follow him. And so in all four Gospels, we find some version or some scriptures that communicate in some way about the Great Commission. In Mark 16, 15 through 20, it says, Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. And it goes on to say that miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. It also says that disciples went everywhere and they did preach the good news and God worked with them or through them. Luke 24, 44 and 49 is another place we find some of this and says, says this, Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer on the third day, rise from the dead. Now verse 47 says this, And that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of all things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. John 20 says this, and he appears to the disciples and he says, uh, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven of them. If you withhold the forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Many understand also Acts 1, to talk about, uh, to, to include it in some of the Great Commission scriptures as well. And, and Acts 1.8 says this, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So ultimately, the Great Commission is empowered by the Holy Spirit. We end up and get the opportunity to be Christ's witnesses, fulfilling the Great Commission in our cities, in our states, in our countries, and anywhere else God would send us to the ends of the earth. And we end up seeing, as we read through Acts, we end up seeing the apostles begin to fulfill and start the Great Commission, where we see um, first in Jerusalem is evangelized. I, through one, Acts 1 through 8, we see some of that. In Acts 8 through 12, we see... Um, finally, the, the Judea and Samaria getting evangelized, and then beyond that, uh, the ends of the earth in Acts 13 uh, through 28. And so, even just as we see in the Acts of the Apostles in that, in that um, scripture, that how God continues to, to see this plan continue to fulfill. Today, we get the opportunity to continue to participate in the Great Commission as well. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Isn't that awesome? God trusts you. He trusts me. He trusts us to participate in this opportunity, this great commission, the message of reconciliation with the message of come back to God. A couple weeks ago, Ellis Martin uh, spoke um, on, on a scripture in 2 Corinthians 3, 4 through 6, where it says, We are confident of all this because of our great trust in God through Christ. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God, and he has enabled us to be ministers of the new covenant. He's enabled us and empowered us to be part of this great commission to, to see people come back to God and to be ministers of the new covenant that Jesus made for us. Again, isn't that awesome? God trusts us. That's wild to me. I don't trust myself sometimes, but God chose and and chooses to trust us, chooses to trust me with this message of come back to him. Now, some of you might be feeling this inside as we were reading some of these scriptures. You might be feeling, hold up, slow up, wait a minute, Pastor Chris. Um, you just used a lot of uncomfortable action words within some of those verses. Some of those verses about the Great Commission, it says some things like this. Go. It says sent. It says preach. Proclaim. Witness. I'm introverted. Can't uh, we just let the missionaries and the evangelists do that job, right? We'd, We'd probably be much more comfortable if they did that, those with that gifting. Well, I would say, my fellow introverts, I feel your pain. 
But the short answer ultimately is, is no. We can't just let them do that with that gifting. In Ephesians 4, it does talk about what we would call the fivefold ministry gifts here in the Dove Network. Uh, it talks about apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. And let me read this. Um, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do this work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and the knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. And so the temptation would be for us to believe that the evangelist gifting, the missionary gifting, or those individuals are strictly encouraged to do that. But ultimately, this scripture tells us the pur- what the purpose of these gifts are, and the purpose is to equip God's people to engage in these works, um, to do his work and build up the church, the, the body of Christ. And this will continue until we come into unity in the faith and knowledge of God's Son that we mature and measure up to that full standard of Christ. And so it's not just those with the evangelist gifting job to evangelize. It's not just their job to do that. It's, we all have this opportunity. So as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, it's part of our calling, ultimately as believers, to participate in the Great Commission and share the good news of reconciliation. We get this opportunity to spread the call to people around us, come back to God. We get that opportunity Come back to God. So here at Westgate, we would believe that every Christian is a witness. Some of Christ's first instructions were, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people there in Mark 1.17. And some of the instructions that we already read um, through the Great Commission Scriptures and in Acts say, You will be my witnesses. Go therefore and make disciples. Preach the good news to everyone. So, as it's been referenced, next Sunday is Mission Sunday, so I'm not going to focus on some of the opportunities in global missions, but I do want to focus on the Great Commission in our own backyards, because there's often times that we're praying for revival in our nation, in our towns, our county, our state, and I think and believe that we need to continue to see a local missionary movement, if I could put it that way, to Lancaster County the Bible Belt of Pennsylvania, right? There's a lot of churches in the area, but still it is a ripe mission field for us to reach many people in this area. Over the past several years, I would have looked at some different statistics associated with both the United States as well as locally. Um, And in the United States, I think this was about four years ago that some of these statistics were done, I would say uh, that about 25% of people in the United States have no religious affiliation. And then it would also say 75% have some religious affiliation. And then in a 2022 Pew Research model based on uh, historical religion switching trends, I don't know what that all means, but it sounded good, predicts that the share of the population identifying as either Christian or unaffiliated could actually end up being closer to like 50-50% by the year 2070. So that's about 50 years from now. And uh, if the current trends accelerate, Christian could represent less than the country's population, is what some of it was basically saying. And I found that quite alarming. And um, I don't believe that will happen because I believe in the church and the mission we have. Now looking at some local statistics um, that were given also in around 2020, Um, it would say in Lancaster County that about 90% actually would have some uh, level of religious affiliation, um, and maybe about 10% wouldn't have um, any religious affiliation, or they wouldn't have answered that they have any religious affiliation. So there's a potential that one in 10 people would maybe not even say that there's a God, or they don't connect with any type of religious affiliation. Now, In that 90%, though, when I just say religious affiliation, I think some of our minds might go to church or Christianity, but in that 90% of religious affiliation, 
there was all types. There was Muslims, there was other, there was Catholics, you know, so it was all, in that 90%, it was broken down into some, some different numbers. And so just humor me for, I don't know the exact numbers, but as I was reading those statistics, I was thinking about the aspect that there could be another 10, maybe even 20% of people that are not necessarily following Christ. And so let's say there's three out of 10 that are not following Jesus. I forget what, I, I looked it up the other day, but I forget now the, the amount of population we have in Lancaster County, but if you take 30% of that population, I don't know, but those numbers tell me that we have a right mission field around us. There's more people, and if our, our county is in any way following the trends of our nation, there is still a lot of people that need reach for Christ, and I don't want to see that downward trend away from Christianity, right? We want to see that upward trend of people coming to know Jesus in our land. So, Lancaster County is definitely a mission field. Our, our, our state is a mission field. Now, at the beginning of the year, I was reviewing our mission statement, and I just wanted to read that here this morning. We, we often shorten it to say, an ordinary people connecting with an extraordinary God, but our mission statement says this, we are an extraordinary people with a mission to transform our community and the world by connecting people with God and each other. It is our purpose to unleash God's extraordinary love with the healing, freedom, and hope available to all through Jesus Christ. And then along with that, I was also reviewing some of our core values as well. And, um, you know, because I'm cool like that, I look at core values. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we don't talk about them much here uh, from the front or different things like that, but I thought I'd just... Uh, bring out a couple of them, and I want to get to one of them specifically called Share, but we, we in those core values on our website and, and how we operate and who we are, this, this, these things come out um, throughout our daily operation. But worship, we believe that the church exists to worship God individually in small groups and in corporate gatherings, like we did today, right? We got the opportunity to worship together. Pray. We believe that power, prayer is a foundational in knowing God, essential in accomplishing God's purpose, and powerful in changing the destinies of men, women, and nations. Serve. We believe all Christians are to model the life of Christ by serving others. Yes and amen. Grow. We believe that in partnership with the Holy Spirit, we can help mature in the people, excuse me, we can help people mature in their relationship with Christ and fulfill God's purpose in their lives. And then this, there's a couple others, but I want to focus on this one. We have one that says share. We believe God's love compels us to impact people's lives with the message of the gospel at home and around the world. And so we desire to see this opportunity for each of us to engage with one of our core values of sharing the gospel, those here at home and around the world. So, if we start with this understanding that each one of us, every Christian is a witness, from there we need to make sure we are developing a heart uh, to share Jesus. So we are the church. I'm talking about us here at Dove Westgate, but I'm also talking about the Big C Church, those following Jesus and His Word, are the only ones with the message that guarantees eternal life. We as the church have the message that guarantees eternal life. John 14, 6 said, Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's pretty exclusive, right? Jesus is the only way. All other messages from all other religions, if I can say this boldly, are missing it. If we genuinely have the truth, we need to have conviction to share it. If we have the truth, if we have the message, I believe the Holy Spirit wants to uh, even just empower us to share it with the people around us. We can't hold it in inside of us. And ultimately, one of the ways that has helped me personally even just develop more of a heart to share the gospel, to, to share with other people, is prayer. And I believe prayer is a key component in developing a heart to ultimately share Jesus. We need to spend that intimate time both with the Father, and, under, and as we do that, I believe we start to understand both His heart for us but then we also understand it for those around us. Prayer also allows, to, uh, prayer also allows um, Holy Spirit to break down barriers in our lives. It allows it to break down fears in our lives so that we can witness for Jesus. And I would even ask you to pray this prayer. Ask the Lord to help you love those around you as he loves you. 
In Romans 5, 6 through 8, which I referenced earlier, it says this, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for the righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to even die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I think Jesus was setting a model and an example for us. And I think, like Jesus, we need to have a little bit of that um, mentality of, over my, my dead body, will you go to hell? Um, so I'd ask this question, are we loving those around us who are, which I like to call pre-Christians, because I believe Holy Spirit's working in each and every person's life, pre-Christians, are we loving them, and are we willing to, in a sense, lay down our life for those around us? Why, in the same way that Jesus set that example that he died for us, why we were still sinners. Many of us here... We, we live in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and um, there's a chance that you may never be called out of this area, and there's a chance, because you live here, that you may not actually ever have to give up your actual physical life for the sake of the gospel. There's times that God, uh, we, people have done that. There's martyrs all throughout history that have given up their life for the sake of the gospel. I don't know if God will call you to ever do that or not, but I do think... He is calling us, he's calling me, I'm preaching to myself here this morning too, to be a little bit more maybe uncomfortable, to die to ourselves, to die to our flesh, and be willing to share the gospel message with those around us. I think we also need to understand that it's not uh, them versus us, it's not believer versus unbeliever. People are people, same as you and me, broken and need of a Savior, just like we are or were, depending on where you're at in your walk with the Lord. Um, they need to hear this redeeming message. And Romans 10 says this, uh, verses 14, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? How can they hear about him unless someone tells them? How will anyone go and tell them without being sent? And that is why the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring the good news, which is a quote from Isaiah 52, 7. Um, yeah, I'll share this. As a, might may or may not cry, I feel like every time I preach I cry a little bit, I'm sorry about that, but um, I felt like as I was preparing for this message, I feel like there's even just a work that God was doing on my heart in a different way. Okay. Um, <laughs> you win, Lord. <laughs> um, but I got this picture. It was just a, a picture of feet. And um, it was a picture of a messenger's feet. And I felt like I had this picture of these feet that were a little bit dirty, a little bit uncomfortable, maybe even um, bruised, challenged, beaten up, because I don't know how this would all worked out in, in, in Bible times. I should have looked it up a little bit more, but they weren't riding a horse. I'm sure a messenger back in that day would have had a long way to travel, would have gone through. They didn't have the type of roads we had today. They would have been dirty. They would have had to go up and down this dangerous terrain, potentially on, excuse me, potentially dangerous paths uncomfortable paths. And I, I just share that message with you because as we read in the scripture how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring the good news. God calls those feet beautiful. That maybe on the outside would be not look lovely. They'd be dirty and un uncomfortable and maybe bruised up. God calls those feet beautiful. Billy Graham says this, It is the Holy Spirit's uh, job to convict, God's job to judge, and my job to love. So, we need to understand that every one of us as a Christian is a witness, and we need to continue to develop that heart. We also need to understand that witnessing as a Christian is normal. We don't have to make evangelism or, or witnessing 
weird. And I, we had a membership class yesterday. I talked to them some about this too yesterday. This aspect, we don't need to make it weird. I think oftentimes when I say the word evangelism, evangelism, some people get this, this picture in their mind of some guy standing on the street corner with a megaphone, you know, like, come and repent. Um, or we get an, a, a picture of some random pamphlet left behind in a bathroom. Um, and God can use that. If you've participated in something like that, God can use that for sure. But sometimes that feels a little uncomfortable and even weird. That's not a normal daily thing. At least I don't go on street corners and, and shout. But um, it, we have to understand that witnessing as, Christian, as a Christian is normal. And uh, like I said earlier, some of Christ's first instructions were, come, follow me, and I will show you how to make fishers of men. And he also said um, in Acts 1.8, like I referenced, you will be my witnesses. The Bible does not present witnessing as necessarily like an extracurricular activity done by only a few special people, but it needs to be part of our daily life wherever opportunities occur. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says this, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Church, we are all called to be salt and light in our environments, and the way we handle work, the way we handle work challenges, the way that we love our spouse, the way that we love our family, the way that we engage with those different opportunities in our lives, we can be salt and light wherever we go, wherever God has placed us, wherever he's put you. I believe he's put you there for a specific purpose and reason, and that he wants to, to partner with you. Over the years, I used to say, God wants to use me. But I, 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 uh, as I've learned more about Scripture and, and reading, I, I've changed it. He wants to partner. He's, he's doing a work, right? And he wants us to invite us in and partner. He doesn't want to use you. He wants to partner with you. Come, follow me. Be a part of what I'm doing in someone's life. He wants to partner with you to get that message out of come back to him. God is working all around you, creating opportunities. And sometimes we just need to open our eyes to what he's doing. Um, I saw Laverne Kreider uh, yesterday, and Larry and Laverne um, started and founded the, the Dove Network and, and lead in it. And, and um, something I've often heard her say when she's speaking is this phrase, and I feel like because of going and hearing her sometimes and um, going through Dove Leadership School and different things like that, I've heard her say this phrase so often, what is the Father doing? What is the Father doing? It's such a simple phrase, but it's so powerful when we think about this. Wherever you've been placed, what is the Father doing? What is the work that He's doing? Who is He working on? Who is He softening for the message? 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and respect. And I would encourage you, don't get in arguments with people about the, the Bible, but be ready in season and out of season. Be ready to share your story. Be ready to share for the work that God's doing in your life. Be ready to share what he's doing even in your life and how Christ has transformed and changed your life. Creating witness opportunities ultimately, I feel like, is God's work. It's his work. Our part is to ultimately be obedient and act in those moments when he gives us those opportunities that he is creating. There's a quote that says, preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. Preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words. God provides the opportunities and the promise of his, whole, uh, of his power, his Holy Spirit, to walk along and be with you through this. The first step for us is to, to become a witness is to change our own heart, and then we must choose that obedience. Sean, why don't you come, come on up? 
We don't commonly uh, do this. We normally put like kind of a testimony video uh, together and kind of share it that way, but I'm not that planned out. And so um, I, I asked Sean just to come share a, a testimony of how God did some of this and gave you the opportunity. So thank you, Chris. Good morning, church. So I'm, I'm glad Chris brought that up because I was like, oh yeah, you want me to share a story? And I was like, so like a video? And he's like, no. And I'm like, okay, I don't get the high behind the editing. Thanks, buddy. So thanks for, thanks for helping me to grow too. Appreciate that opportunity. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Chris, Chris asked me to share the story. Uh, it was 2017. So I work in the electrical field. I'm, I'm an electrician, work at Meadow Valley Electric right down the road here. I've been there for nine years now. And uh, started out as just an electrical apprentice in the field, learning, growing, um, and then uh, started transitioning and, and seeing how the Lord has been u- was using my influence in the field, um, just taking on more leadership and stuff. And before I became a foreman, I had the opportunity to go to state college with a crew of guys and uh, build a solar, do a solar project in a field. And it was the dead of winter, like real cold. Um, it was 2017, winter 2017, and it was very, very cold that winter up there at least. Um, and I remember the the opportunity that came up was um, this foreman um, was we could we could tell me and one, my one other coworker that was saved could tell that the Lord was working on his life and um, along with some of the other guys there too and the opportunity came up that in the mornings we would do these little little like huddles just talking about the day like what we're, we're going to do and it was since it was so cold we'd come together sometimes and like be huddled around because it was like windy and freezing cold. I remember the one day it didn't get above like zero. It was negative, real feel of negative like 10 or something. It was crazy. So we all like huddled together and the Lord prompted me and my coworker to um, just like start to pray, like take those times as prayer. Like we didn't invite, like nobody invited us to. So we started using those times in the morning as just a huddle, as a prayer. And um, so we prayed over the, like the crew over the day. Um, and then that stuck with me. I became, shortly after I became a foreman, and on every project following that that I would run, I would um, ask the guys if it's okay if I pray to start the day. And, and we'd talk about the day's work, and then I'd, I'd pray, pray for protection, pray for anything that I knew that was going on in the guys' lives that, that I could stand with them in, um, give them opportunity to share stuff. Um, and it's been, it was awesome. It was a great, great opportunity. Lots of opportunities came of that just to speak into people's life. And even I remember some projects that prayed for like, even like weather stuff and like that, that it would work out that we get a full day in and whatever. And the Lord like always would move in different ways and people would see it and guys would make comments about how like our prayers are working, like even though they weren't believers sometimes. So that was really cool. But this particular story back in 2017, um, we were staying out of town. We were staying in, a, in an Airbnb all together. And um, so we started doing these prayer huddles in the morning. And then um, the guy that was, that was coming, like we could tell, was, was interested in knowing the Lord. I was, I was at the Airbnb with him. And he would constantly just start asking questions about the Bible, about Christ, about um, my, my testimony. And, and we're, I was always ready to just give him answers and sit down and talk with him. And through that that experience, he says he says now he still works at the company. He's in a le- like a level of leadership. He's actually my boss now, actually. Um, and he um, he he came to know the Lord. He gave his he gave his life to the Lord over that project, um, over that duration of that project. And he says now he says that he got more church in that time out of town with me and my coworker talking to him than he had in his entire what thirty almost forty years of life prior to that just sitting down talking and, and being available to, to share. And, um, and so it was really encouraging. And I, I just spoke with him the other day about what the Lord was doing in his life prior to that. And it was a really short period of time, but leading up to that, there was just little things that the Lord was starting to work in his life. Um, and I just so happened to be there to be able to take him across, you know, the finish line and his walk with the Lord. And, and actually, he's walking with the Lord now. And it was an awesome opportunity, and it's, and it's, um, it's so encouraging. But I want to encourage you guys, like, you, like Chris said in, you know, a little earlier, you never know what the Lord is doing. Like, so many times I feel like we get discouraged because we're just sowing seeds, and we're not necessarily seeing the harvest in, in those lives. Um, but so often the Lord is, is working in those seeds that you planted for somebody else to come and harvest them. Um, and so it's like those little things, praying, you know, a huddle in the morning, utilizing that time to pray with the, the person or the people or, you know, saying that one word that the Lord has called you to say in that moment, you don't really feel like it. You, 
you're throwing out a seed, you might not see the harvest, but the Lord works in so many ways. And, and, and sometimes, and in my, like in my case with this individual, like you might be the one to be able to pr- say that salvation prayer with them and see their life radically transform and then walk with them and see them transform other people. And so, yeah, just it's a constant challenge to me. My position has since then changed, and I'm, um, I have direct reports now, and it looks totally different than it did when I was a foreman. But I'm, I'm all, like, constantly challenged and, and trying to challenge myself and say, Lord, how do you want me to be utilized in this position? And, yeah, there's so many times I feel like, hey, I'm, I'm, not, I'm missing it, but, like, what's that little thing, God, today? Taking the time to say, well, what's that little thing today that you want me to ask the guys or you want me to um, pointedly ask about their family or their, whatever it is in their lives so I can stand with them? So, yeah, it's that story. Thanks. You can take that today. I love that story because they just started praying before a job in the morning. They just took some time to dedicate it to the Lord, and then that created an opportunity and an openness. And so what does that look like in your situation? What does that look like in your context and the opportunities for you to potentially share about your faith. He was sharing about his faith by praying, and then it gave more opportunity. And so <clears throat> could it be as something as simple as that, praying in the morning with some of your team or whoever you work with that could potentially change their life forever? So <clears throat> we don't need to overcomplicate this, in my opinion. I think more often than not, we just need to be obedient. And so I want to encourage you in that this morning to look for those opportunities. Now, we're going to end here in just a second. Um, I always love this verse in Matthew 9, and we're going to participate in this all together. Matthew 9, 35 through 38 says this, And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciple, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So as we end here this morning, we're just going to take just a couple minutes, not long. I don't want to make anyone too uncomfortable yet. We'll let God do that. But just get with one, two, three people. And let's go ahead and ask Holy Spirit to lead us. Let's ask and pray that God would send out laborers into the harvest. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you go ahead and your spouse or whoever you're with, let's just take a minute and let's just pray together. And then I'll end with prayer.
Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we declare you as the Lord of the harvest. And Lord, we join with Scripture this morning in praying for that you would send laborers into the harvest, Father God. And we just believe that you want to use us here at Westgate, this church family, to play our part, Lord. And we know that some plant, some water, but Holy Spirit, we know that you bring the increase. And Lord, we know there's many people that you're calling unto yourself. And so, Lord, we ask that you would help us to see what you're doing in our lives, in the people's lives around us. And Father God, let help us to be ready in season and out of season to share the hope that lies within us. And so, Father God, would you just empower us by your Holy Spirit to be that salt, to be that light that you've called us to be in the situations that you've placed us. And Father God, that you would be, as we sang earlier this morning, that you would be glorified in our lives. And so, Lord, we just commit this time to you. We ask that you would empower us by your Holy Spirit to change the world around us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, you are dismissed. The Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. You are dismissed. Peace like a river, wash over me.